Welcome back to Secret Weapons, and today we are taking a look at The History Lesson, Volume 3 by Alexander. This feels like an appropriate demo to do right now, because if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen that I recently had my first child. Uh, he's about seven weeks old, and time feels very elastic right now. Uh, so apologies if this uh, review is a little bit kind of meandering and rambling, I'm having trouble kind of collating thoughts these days. But it feels very appropriate that we are doing the history lesson for that in a time where, uh, like I said, time feels elastic. And that is what this is in essence. This is the version three of the history lesson from Alexander, a really, really cool, robust line within their pedal brand. Uh, I actually remember watching the original history lesson demos when they when they dropped version one that just had the little three position with the with the three decades on it it was the first pedal i had ever heard from them and i was really impressed with the sounds i thought it was an incredibly incredibly great sounding simple i'm gonna put air quotes around simple delay pedal um the fact that it has come to this is really cool this is actually my first ever alexander pedal uh which is really cool because like i said i this was the first pedal of their line that I ever saw all those years ago. Really happy to be demoing the volume three of this. And there's a lot to love about this pedal right here. You've gone from those three decades on the original one to your Neo series style preset and engine selector in the middle with six, with six different modes on this thing. And I can tell you every single one of them has its own world, has its own kind of territory that it lives in and really does excel at. Uh, during that intro, you'll notice that you heard a lot of the magnetic tape echo. And that is because this thing does tape echo really well. This has that exact right tape crinkle and low pass filtering for kind of darkening up those repeats. It's got everything that you want out of a good hi-fi tape. Um, when we get to the sound samples at the end here, you'll notice that we kind of really lose ourselves in that for a little while, just because it's hard to not get distracted playing that mode. It just sounds right. It, it might be the best mono tape delay I've ever played. That's where it's at. It's, it's got the right modulation. It's got the right tone. It just feels good in response. It's, it's pretty unparalleled as far as mono tape delays go. So hats off to Alexander for that mode. The rest of this pedal notwithstanding. And the great news is the rest of it is really cool. Like right next to it up here, you've got the 4HD, which is the multi-head uh, kind of multi-tap delay. And it's amazing. I remember when I first plugged into this thing, that was the sound that really jumped out to me right off the bat. I had plugged it into my Vinny. I was getting acquainted. And I was just kind of like playing a couple notes, tapping to the next one, playing a couple notes, tapping to the next one. And I tapped into that one and it did that kind of like record speed up to get to the speed that the multi-head was moving at. And right from that moment, I went, ah, okay, this is special. The different configurations of the head across, of the heads across the modulation control over here are really cool. They're all inventive. They're all rhythmic in ways that make good sense. I just find that it's a very, very, very inspiring application of that kind of pattern delay thing in a way that I don't really find in a lot of pattern delays. I don't tend to really fall for your average kind of multi-tap delay thing. Okay, the bucket brigade delay, the analog delay on this thing, I realize that I'm just kind of like gushing about each one of these modes. And it's not that every single mode on this is like my favorite thing on the planet. I can tell you right off the bat that the filter delay at the bottom here it's probably my least used mode on this. Uh, it has kind of this like melty pitch shift thing that's really hard for me to love as a delay. There's some really cool chorus sounds to be found in there, but uh, if it was a reverse delay instead right there, if it was a like incrementally pitch shift delay, like something with like, uh, in, with like intervals that I could use, I would find that I was using it a lot more. That filter is just not totally doing it for me. I just needed to get that out of the way so that I can go around and keep bragging on the rest of them because I'm just going to do that. The bucket brigade delay on this thing. If you've been around this channel for a while, you know how much I love analog delay and what a stickler I am once again for mono analog delays. And this thing is great. The modulation on, the, on this delay is dialed. We're saying delay entirely too much. The modulation on this mode is amazing. It's the chorusing is exactly right. It's warm, but it actually gets exactly as bright as you want an analog delay line to get. The feedback can get into this kind of almost sound on sound murky, that kind of heaving 
bucket brigade thing that just sounds right. It's really cool. The analog delay on this thing sounds great. So does the digital delay. You've got the exact right amount of that kind of hi-fi, crisp responsiveness and everything. The modulation on it's really cool. Um, you know, it's it's all it's everything you wanted out of being the edge. Uh, it's digital delay. I don't know. I don't know what else there is to say except they did it right. It sounds exactly the way you want it to. Finally, the lo-fi delay on this thing. It's probably the only delay mode on this that doesn't feel like it absolutely encapsulates its own space. It is also a tape delay like the magnetic one. Um, however, uh, instead of a tone control up here, uh, as the alternate function, you have a kind of like grit saturation dirt knob kind of thing. and. It is really, really cool. There are some ways to incorporate that lo-fi delay mode with something like broken cassette sounds out of the generation loss that are just kind of this beautiful lo-fi match made in heaven kind of thing. Uh, if I'm just doing like delay delay, I will tend to go for the magnetic delay over it. But for some of these stranger applications, I find that it's incredibly, incredibly useful. And it just has a lot of great character. Um, beyond that, this thing has a amazing feature set, wet, wet and dry out on the output by using a TRS cable, MIDI in, clock in, preset control over here. This thing is robust. There's a USB port on the top, which is always threatening for some reason. No, but it's, uh, it's got everything. It's got what you need. The ability to update the firmware up here is really handy. Um, I'm just really impressed. I, I was like I said earlier. I was I was really really impressed with the version one of this, and I'm really really happy to have gotten to mess around with this version of it because, like I said, it did tape delay right. It did analog delay right. That lo-fi mode with the generation loss is just you'll hear in a minute. It's really, really cool. So, Alexander, this is phenomenal. You guys killed it. Let's go to some sound samples. Okay, so typically I wouldn't run through every single setting for a pedal, but uh, the history lesson does such a good job of having very specific sounds and having kind of everything that feels like it fills its own uh, space with very little overlap in a way that I really love. So I'm actually just gonna run through all six modes. We're not gonna go too deep into the secondary functions for all that. We're just gonna kind of dial a sound, enjoy it, and move on with our lives. Uh, before we jump into it, Let's run through my signal chain. I'm using my Jennings Voyager into the Una by 29 pedals buffer, the Protein, the Diamond Compressor, the Preamp Mark II, the Generation Loss, the History Lesson, the Specular Tempest, and the Strymon Iridium. We're running into Universal Audio Apollo using a 1073 preamp and a LA-2A compressor at the very, very end of everything. Here's that dry tone without the History Lesson. <laughs> magnetic tape echo. feels like it has all of the trademarks and hallmarks of what you love to hear in a magnetic uh, tape echo, that kind of tape. Um, let's turn up that crinkle a little bit more just for funsies and see how that turns out. That warble is just right. The modulation just feels lush and chorusy in the right ways. And I just, when you turn up that tone control, you really get a nice crisp tape delay.
hand, you can take that tone back down for a nice murky repeat. Absolutely killer. I'm a huge fan. Like I said, this is probably my standout mode on this device. And what I'm going to say is for good reason. Um, okay, let's go to our analog delay, which is historically my favorite type of delay. Oof. Right there. So warm, so lush. It's hard to talk about these because it's just it's 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 not a super complicated delay pedal, but the sounds are great. And so I just find myself kind of more engaged with sitting here and just kind of letting it speak for itself a little bit. I hope I hope you're fine. I don't know why I'm asking that. No one's ever been like, I wish this review had more talking in it. Next up, uh, the digital delay. Always. These are the ones that I find it's helpful to kind of bring that uh, modulation amounts back down a little bit because I really, I really do like the kind of pitch modulation that this has got, uh, but I find that a digital delay is just great for that kind of crispness. Right it all the way back up.
Simple, great. It's digital lay. It's awesome. Lo-fi. There we go. Uh, so on this one, the tone control is a drive applied to your repeats, which gives it that kind of like big boominess. So you can see we've, we've dialed, dialed it back down a little bit. So let's take it all the way to minimum. Nice and pretty. Let that alternate down. Take it all the way up. This kind of thing can be cool for like uh, full wet swells. I also really like pairing this one with something super broken sounding from the generation loss. So let's turn that on really quick and just do some really light, sparse texture kind of stuff. It just adds a little bit more to make it feel like everything's kind of falling apart there. That's so good. Okay, this one is really cool. This is the one that kind of jumped out to me the most dramatically when I first got this thing. Uh, this is just kind of like a forehead delay um four heads not forehead um and the modulation control is actually just a bunch of different multi-head patterns which is really cool so like you've got which is just three notes being played really consistently switch to a different one
So it can be really cool for rhythmic stuff like that. But uh, on the intro, what I was really liking about it is really simple parts, giving a little bit more energy and a little more excitement uh, to kind of offset a really simple part. So in that intro, I was playing a really simple thing with the magnetic tape echo, and I wanted to offset it with like a... Just three notes, you let them ring out, but it just has that stuttery... It's just so cool, it bounces exactly right. Super cool. It's more fun with high repeats. And last up, we have the filter delay, which is kind of what the lo-fi is to the tape echo, but applied to the digital delay. You have the kind of digital engine in there, um, but then you've got this really interesting kind of either sped up or melty slow down uh, pitch control, as well as a kind of like resonant filter on the repeats. I find that this one's really good if you darken up that tone, reduce the feedback a little bit, and use it just kind of almost as like a very otherworldly chorus more than anything else. So that's with the modulation right at noon, preventing any of that real melting, but this really vibey. start to introduce a little bit of that drop off pitch wise. Very like seasick chorus kind of thing. A little bit of like anxiety inducing upwards bending. My guess is that this is kind of at its sweet spot uh, using uh, some sort of like MIDI control to to kind of temporarily drop that pitch and then bring it back to unity. Um, I do like it as that kind of like unison melty chorus kind of thing. That's a really cool sound. Pretty cool. Okay, that is all of the settings on this wonderful little device. Uh, we're gonna play ourselves out with a nice hefty dose of tape delay, my favorite mode on here. Uh, Alexander, this is amazing. Congrats to the team on, uh, on a very, very cool version three of the history lesson. Uh, really, really, really cool delay. Let's, uh, let's play it out. Mm -hmm. 